coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Hey man, shout out everybody out there on Team Bank and Pam, man, I appreciate the love, I appreciate the support, I'm, I'm, boom, I'm, boom. Hey, we out here, 33 is three of me, 33 33 years of prison stories, man. We out here, we rolling, we pushing that P, we pushing that positive energy in my brand new relaxing chair. You understand? And we're going to be here. We're going to keep pushing this message and pushing this message until everybody know it, until everybody understand it, until everybody joins on board with it. So let's go. Let's get it. Tell a friend to tell a friend and tell everybody they know, man. We're on the road to 200K and we're trying to get there by any means necessary and as fast as possible. The fastest way is word of mouth, spread, share, you know, repost, do whatever you got to do, man, to support the movement, man. Uh, because like I said, make no mistake, this is a movement. It is not a moment. And we pushing and we're going to keep on pushing, man. So big love, TBP Nation, stand up. We out here. Salute. Oh, man. Um, I don't know why this is a topic today, but it is a topic today because this is what's on my mind. But um, not specifically, but you know what I'm saying. But yeah, but some some I was just talking to uh, another uh, old timer that was locked up with me and stuff, and we was just reminiscing. And it just made me think about man when I first came to prison, and um, man, I can remember. You know, being in Southampton receiving, right? And by this time, you know, I've been locked up for a minute, you know what I'm saying? The jail, this, that, and the third, and all that. So it's been a while. So I can remember first being in Southampton receiving, man, and getting them them first visits and stuff. And man, I'm telling you. And at the time, you know, I was still married. So, you know, you you first of all, you've been locked up for a long time. You you already deprived of a woman, you know. And um, at that right there alone is shock in itself. So then, when you and you get visits in the jail, it's always through a phone, through plexiglass. So when you finally get to the point where you could actually touch the person and everything, man, it it just be overwhelming. But it also be a lot of anxiety too because they down on you, they down on you. You know what I'm saying? They trying to hey, 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 don't do this, don't do that. So it's crazy. But man, listen. Yo, 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 desires and lust be so much at an all-time high, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you ain't never done nothing before, you know? <laughs> and it feels like it. So I didn't know anything about, you know, how the visiting room go or nothing until I got in there, man. But I can remember getting in there, man, and it was so crazy because dudes be in there, man, and dudes, you know, I started seeing how dudes try to draw the police or, Sometimes the police be in the booth, he be falling asleep, and it don't, if, if the floor uh, person ain't in there, especially at receiving, it usually might not be a floor person, it just might be the person in the booth. So, man, I can see dudes trying to get it on, trying to get it in, trying to, you know, get their funky roll in. So it was just crazy to me, but it was also nerve wracking, right? Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, 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 it was crazy. <laughs> It was crazy, man. You want to do something so bad, but you don't want to get caught because you get caught, you know, you're going to lose your visits. You get caught, you know that, you know, uh, you don't know nothing about the system, what they're going to do. You don't know all the, you know, the, the things that go along with it. So, you know, you want your visits. You need your visits. Your visits keep you, you know, you know, you know, with something to look forward to while you locked up back there, man. You look forward to the weekends coming, hoping that somebody coming up there to see you. And if you're fortunate enough that somebody love you enough to come see you, you don't be one to lose that. You know what I'm saying? But I can remember when I ended up leaving, though, and I go to the wall. When I first got to that wall, man, let me tell you something. <laughs> By the time I first hit that visiting room, man, you talking about shock, man. I was in all types of shock, man. Them jokers had that stuff down to a science, man. Them dudes in there was humping, man. They was humping and pumping up in that joint. They had it where they had a little system and they could, you know, go behind the the the, the, the um, vending machines and, and and they had to pour the, the the dudes that work in the 
vision room to pull the vending machines out where it's wide enough for people can get behind them. Man, they would sneak behind them vending machines, man, to get their freak on and sneak back out and go in rotation. It was crazy. Then you had some dudes that was right there in the tables and stuff, man. When the CO ain't looking or he, you know, being blocked off or being his his uh, attention being distracted, man, they get right there on their knees and stuff, man. It was I mean, it was insane, man. And for a young dude first coming in and you seeing all this stuff is crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, what? It's like I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. And then you got to look at it in, in all types of ways because this thing was causing all types of controversy, especially for new dudes. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know. And then you're looking at it like, man, a man is in this vision room, man, and you got your family in here, man, whoever it may be, you know, your girl, your mom, your, your sister, whoever. And these dudes is exposing themselves in the visiting room with their visitor. If it's a female, whoever she may be, you know, playing with them and doing stuff like that, man, it was wild, man. It's like, boom, you got to tell your people literally to focus on you. Look, don't be looking around, don't, you know what I'm saying, because it's going down. And, and to me, especially like now, looking back in retrospect, man, them COs knew what was going on, man. Some of them jokers was freaked out they self, and they don't care. They want to watch it, you know what I'm saying? And um, it it just was a wild scene, man, to see that type of stuff. I told you, man, dudes had special made pants with the Velcro in the middle where they could pull the Velcro open and, you know, you know get their business out. Man, it, it, it was crazy to me, man. Dudes was sneaking in the bathroom. Dudes was paying COs to go in the bathroom, pay them. You know what I'm saying? Get their people to bring up the cash. It just was crazy. It, it, it had came to a point once I was there for a little while, I started learning the rules and dudes started telling you. They said, listen, man, don't bring your people over on this side. You know what I'm saying? Because they had a dual, a dual visiting room on, on, on in the wall. Where this side was when you had kids. This side was for when you didn't have kids. So they used to tell people, man, you got to go on the side where they ain't got, where you got to, you know, get them to bring some kids or something. Because over here, this is what they doing. Whether you like it or not, this is what's going down. Then you do Desperado. And then, you know, like I said, it's a double-edged sword because you want to do it too. <laughs> you want to do it too because you got the urge, but you don't want to see it. But you want to do it. So, you know, it, 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 it was wicked, man. And then you had, like I say, the younger dudes coming in, their moms coming in there, their sisters, their girls, even their girls. They get mad and they approaching dudes, man. And dudes is old timers in there. And dudes is, man, dudes ain't having none of it, man. So, man, fights was breaking out. You know, dudes was getting, and, and getting that Bethlehem up in them and it for approaching a dude. You know what I'm saying? Dudes was getting a rumbling in the visiting room for approaching a dude. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, man, what's up with you? Man, you got your, you know, what you, what you, what you talking And they going. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy part about that is, when they start doing that, then while the police trying to get, you know, control of that, everybody else is is grabbing packages and sacks and stuff, and other dudes is humping because they know they're distracted. But they're distracted from the same thing that they doing. It, it's just, it's a madhouse, man. It's a madhouse now. Just imagine going through all that and seeing all that and trying to understand all of that. And you young in the penitentiary. And you got a rock of time. And you thinking, this is how it is. This, this, this is what I got myself into. This is how I got to live. You know what I'm saying? And it's, man, it's, it's sometimes I tell you, it just be overwhelming, man. You don't know what to do. You don't know whether to try. You don't know whether somebody will approach you. You don't know whether what's going to happen if you get caught. You don't know if they get caught. You ain't going to see your people no more. I mean, it's just too much to process. You know what I'm saying? At once, it's just too much to process. And then when you being locked up and you just starting to get the visits or like you've been through the situations like me, like you don't went through the jail for a long time, then you don't went through receiving and now you're here. And your mind is like, oh, I can't wait to get these visits. I can't lose these visits. I don't want to lose these visits, but I want to do that. But I want to try, but I don't want to lose these visits. So it's just, it's a tug of war in your mind. You know what I'm saying? It's a tug of war, man. And um, yeah, it was going down. I remember I was leaving out the visiting room one day. And um, Young Joker was back there with me too. He was was older than me, but he was young for us, like, you know, in the penitentiary, you know, um, probably late 20s. 
but he was just getting there, as was I. He hadn't been there that long. And an old timer came back there to use the bathroom. He's still indivisible, but he had to come back there to use the bathroom, right? The, 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 the people that visit can use the bathroom in there. We got to come all the way in the back to use the bathroom. So he come back there to use the bathroom, and Young is see him. Now, he was one of them dudes that was out there, you know what I'm saying, doing his thing. So when Young is see him, Young is like, man, man, you ate, man, 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 my mom and my auntie was in there, man. You real disrespectful with that old time. Man, old timer ain't even say a word. Just looked at him and walked up to him and just took off. And they rumbling right there in the in the in the shakedown zone when we leave in the visiting room. And they rumbling. And in my mind, I'm like, boom, his visit's still out there. He's supposed to be going back. But this is how serious the wall was and the individuals that was in there. They weren't going for nothing. You know what I'm saying? And in his mind, like, how dare you tell me what to do? You a young and you just coming in the penitentiary. Don't worry about what I'm doing with my private parts or whatever. Put your people in check. And man, he commenced to whooping the dog snot out of him. Right? I'm steady trying to get dressed with police running there. They tackle them all down, do what they got to do. I'm over in the corner tip. Stand over there. Stand over there. Don't move. Don't move. I'm like, I ain't moving anyway. But I'm still trying to put my clothes on. But they rumbling hard as I don't know what. But Youngie couldn't do nothing with him. You know what I'm saying? Old time I gave him that work. I mean, he gave him that work. And he was rumbling with the police when they trying to get him up off of him. But, you know, then they had them clubs. They said, clubbing him. <laughs> that Billy Club would make you get some get right. But, yeah, man, but that, that was visiting room activity. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing. All the police come rushing back there. And then the whole visit room clear. If you would have walked up in that visit room during that time right there, man, you would have seen so much humping and pumping, man. You would have been like, man, what the, what the? <laughs> man, that jump would have looked like an orgy popping off up in there because when there ain't no supervision in there, that's the first thing dudes going to do. You know what I'm saying? Unless somebody got the sack in there, then they, they trying to grab the sack. They trying to manipulate the sack to get the sack out. But, man, they was turning that joint up, and I'm stuck back there all up against the wall, can't move or nothing, got the weight, looking at all of this chaos going on. Mind you, too, I'm still new in the penitentiary. I'm like, man, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a lot, man, it's a lot. I'm telling you, penitentiary life come at you fast, man. You ain't going to have time to figure nothing out like talking about. Most of the things you have to figure out, you're going to have to figure out right then and there on the spot. Because they ain't like nobody just walking up to you telling you what to expect, telling you what's going on, telling you this how this go, young blood. Or this how, they don't got time for that. Everybody doing their own bit. Everybody already in their mode. Everybody already learned their uh, survival skills. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody going to hold your hand up in that joint and tell you. And some of the things you got to figure out, you may figure it out too late. Like, like dude, not to, you know, pull up on nobody about that. You know what I'm saying? And, and all how to pull up on somebody like that obviously he picked the wrong way you know what i'm saying and then he up in his own touch now you got an enemy you just get in the penitentiary now you got an enemy already and you don't know who his homeboys is who his friends is who his affiliates is so now you got multiple enemies that you don't even know how to put a face to you don't even know how to put a face to them you don't even know who they are you understand because you couldn't hold your tongue you know what I'm saying? And I can understand it to a degree because you looking at it like, man, I ain't, man, I ain't like that. You know, my auntie up in there, man, my mama, you know, you probably in there still talking court stuff. Man, we need to appeal. And, you know, you talking, well, what's going on at home and how y'all been doing? And then they look over and they see dude got, you know what I'm saying, all this stuff I would expose or somebody over there touching and playing on them. You know, that's, that's, that's shocking to people that's coming from the street. That's shocking the people that's out here in society. They're not used to that. It's the equivalent to them going into a restaurant and sitting in there eating and look over and see, you know, people over there doing what they do or, or, or all of their genitals out. That's shocking. You know what I'm saying? So being fresh off the street, you is shocking to you. And then with your people right there, so but you got to know. It's just got to be instinctual where you know, especially if you look and you see a lot of people doing it, you know it's not normal to you, but you got to be able to process and compartmentalize, like, not to snap be like, oh, well, it's normal. It's normal to, 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 to hear, you know what I'm saying, and not say nothing and try to gather information without approaching somebody. 
You got to be able to do these things. It's not that you're scared, it's that you're smart. Because moving too fast in the penitentiary or moving without information or knowledge can get you killed, man. It can get you killed. Had he got to pull up on that same dude on the yard and said that in the tone and the manner that he said it in, he probably would have had that Bethlehem sticking out his chest. Probably had it sticking out his chest because obviously dude won't do no explanation. He won't do no explaining nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's how the, a lot of dudes in the wall was. That's how a lot of dudes in Mettenberg was. They had a like a zero tolerance for, for BS uh, type of uh, uh, personality. Like, man, who is you to ask me nothing? You ain't the police. If you ain't the police, don't ask me nothing. Period. If you ain't the police, don't try to check me for nothing. Period. You know what I'm saying? So that's how a lot of dudes do. And see, the, the new generation, was, before I got out the penitentiary, everybody snatched. Everybody doing a lot of jaw jacking. Everybody, hey, hey look, man, you know, let me do the book. Nah, them dudes won't do none of that. Them dudes ain't explaining nothing. Or you pull up on dudes before I left. Hey, man, Sip said, man, you was with me. No, I ain't do it. They explaining this. If these dudes ain't do no explaining. You know what I'm saying? They demonstrate. <laughs> they demonstrate it, man. They going to, you know what I'm saying? They going to demonstrate on it. And that's what, that, that's what have the young blood, man. And um, like I say, I've seen it, man. I've seen these type of things jump off. But I ain't going to lie to you and tell you, like I said, I won't shock. I was shocked when I first started saying it. I've told y'all a few of them things, touched on it anyway. Like when my mom was in there, and I said, my mom, mom, don't be looking around here. <laughs> don't be looking around here. People are already trying to talk to you because you're bringing all this good food up in here. And I don't even like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be real touchy when it comes to my mom. Whether, you know, she initiate trying to be friendly or not, she, she, that's how she is, that's how she's, she, you know what I'm saying, she's a kind-hearted person, you know what I'm saying, she loves God, and she gonna try to help people if she can, but I'm trying to let her know, this ain't the place for that, you know what I'm saying, but you can't really tell your mama what to do, you know what I'm saying, but I'm letting these jokers know, don't be coming over here, don't be trying to, man, if she offer you some food, man, don't say nah, you know what I'm saying, so it, it was one of those things, you know what I'm saying, but it could have got me in a lot more, you know, trouble or, 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 or a life or death situation for real, you know, just by something small like that, just a small gesture. Because like I say, people in the penitentiary, I knew already at that point in time that these dudes funny style, man. You give them something anyway, they might think you like them. You know what I'm saying? No matter how or uh, what age your mama is or, or what race she is or whatever, they don't care. They this, People is so starved for love and affection and attention and kindness, just a simple gesture of kindness. They so starved for that in the penitentiary, man, that any, you know, gesture of, of the sort, man, will, will, will make them feel affectionate towards you, will, will make them feel, you know what I'm saying, you know, indebted to you or, 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 or feel closer to you. And I'm trying to explain that to her. And I'm knowing this at a young age, you know what I'm saying? This is what it is. I couldn't probably couldn't have verbalized it like I'm verbalizing it now. But I knew what it was. I knew because these dudes, it's like I call it now, it's the, the Steve Urkel syndrome. You know how when Steve Urkel was on there, he always was trying to get to Laura. And then Laura kept telling him emphatically, I do not want you. You know what I'm saying? I don't like you. I ain't going to never like you. I don't want blah, blah, blah. And then he said, oh, thank you, Steve. Or he do something nice. He used to think, you love me, don't you? You know what I'm saying? It's one of those types of when they do something nice for you. You do something nice for a dude that's locked up, especially some of the dudes that's gone, and they think that you automatically like them. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's a crazy world, man. It was just a crazy world, crazy ride. But please believe they was humping and pumping in them, them, them wall visiting rooms. They was humping and pumping. And you can't tell me, or nobody can't tell me, that that administration ain't know what was going on. I think they was, you know, more or less, if you want blatant, blatant, where you, you know what I'm saying, where you cause a disturbing in there or something like that, or somebody family went and said something, which was a no-no, your, your, your people couldn't get up and go complain to the police, look, they over there doing this, that, and that, because all of that coming down on you, and it's coming down on you hard, you know what I'm saying, you might not make it through the week if your people get up and go do that, somebody going somebody gonna to gun you down, bro, and I'm talking about the Bethlehem, hey, they going to gun you down, Joe. If you if your people go do that, so a lot of times people people on the street, like I say, by you not knowing the rules, you don't even know what rules to get to your people. You understand? You don't know what rules to get to them. 
and they could do something that they think is in your best interest or they could do something because they feel a certain type of way and that is all going to come back on you. You ain't going to be able to get away from that. Man, I ain't know my mom wasn't going to go up there and do that. Man, I ain't know my sister wasn't going to go up there and do that. You ain't going to get them words out. Not that, whoa, oh, I can't see it. You won't even be able to get the words out because by the time somebody would have came to get you, you know, they won't come in and, like I say, doing no talking. They would have came and got you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, that man, man, people in there trying to, you know, make them be tightening up in the vision room. These people went up there and told what they doing. Who? Somebody going somebody to gonna, somebody gonna get you, man. They going to get you just for the, for the whole rest of the population. You understand me? They going to get you for the rest of the population. If all the other dude that you people told on don't get you first. If he don't get you first, you're going to get got, though. You're going to get got. Because when I first came in, the penitentiary, like I say, telling is a no-no. So you, y'all you might say, well, you ain't tell your people told. Well, your people is you in the penitentiary. <laughs> you're going to wear all they sins. Yeah, if people done called up there and was scared for their uh, son, their brother, their whoever, and say, yeah, well, such such in the block mess. Because you done told them something in confidence on the phone about whatever situation you're going through, trying to work it out, trying to, you know, get their opinion or whatever, and they get so scared, and they call up there to the administration. Man, your life is in, in more danger, man. Because now you, now you tell it. I ain't tell. I told my people on the phone. Well, you told your people on the phone, and they told, so you told. You know what I'm saying? Your people tell, you tell. Straight up. That's penitentiary rules. Your people call up there and tell anything. Is on you. That's on you, baby. That's on you. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of dudes that got busted up, hurt up, messed up because the people thought they had their best interests at heart. But penitentiary is not, the society is not like the rules in the street. You cannot do that. You cannot. You will hurt your people way more than you help your people. Now, you call up there and you complaining about. They ain't got what they need or or, or the people that you, or, or the administration is taking something from them or treating them bad or something. That's a whole different ballgame. But if your people call up there and say something about another inmate in any capacity, whether he picking on them and he got beef or he don't want to be in a cell with them because the dude in the cell might do something to him or you don't, you can even say, call up there and say, I want my son out the cell with his um, roommate because he say he going to hurt his roommate because his roommate doing this. It's all telling. It's all going to come back on your rap sheet. You told it because you put that battery in your people back to call. Whether you did or not, that's the way it's coming down the pipe. And you're going to have to pay for that, man. You're going to have to pay for that. And you're going to have to wear that label. And it ain't nothing that can be. It's not irreversible. It's, you can't get it off you. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, you know, people need to be able to educate their people on the street about what to do and what not to do. But it's hard to do because sometimes you don't know the rules yourself. You don't know the rules yourself. Especially if you're green and new and then you just learning. So how you going to tell somebody how to act and how to conduct themselves if you don't even know what to do? See what I'm saying? There ain't no manual coming with this. This on the fly. But all the stakes on the table. That you got to learn this stuff. All the stakes on the table, you got to learn this stuff on your own with no mistakes allowed. Oh, slips count too. You know what I'm saying? All of that count, man. So, yeah, man. But, yeah, man. Just, just, I just can remember those days fresh early in my bed, man, trying to figure it all out, man. And, you know, by the grace of God, I did, man, with, with you know, with, um, as as less injuries as possible, man. So that's a blessing in itself, man. A blessing, a blessing. But anyway, man, that's how it's going down in the penitentiary, man, in the visiting rooms, man. If there is a will, there is a way. I know a whole lot of other stuff. As I moved on to other institutions, I saw different ways that dudes was able to do what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it and how it was going down and how the, you know, the plot was unfolding. You know, it, every institution is different. It's different rules on every one of them. So just when you learn the rules, you might be getting transferred and you got to abandon them rules because they don't work over here. And you got to go with these rules. You got to learn them quick because if you don't learn them, they can learn you. If they learn you, it might be too late. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, just a quick, quick video for y'all, man. Y'all talk to me in the comments. I talk back. Man, listen, 
I am uh, I apologize to announce that we 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 gonna have to change the date it appears for the meet and greet. We're definitely not abandoning the meet and greet. We definitely gonna have it. Definitely is just in the same month, but it's just gonna be pushed back because we could not get the uh, hotel accommodations in the space of the venue that we needed. So we're working on another venue where we're trying to lock in the date. And right now it's looking like they're going to lock the date in for us. They're going to be able to uh, facilitate us. So we're still looking same place, same area, just a different date. Now we're looking at the 28th, uh, the 28th, 29th, 29th, 30th. I'm going to know for sure within a day or two, we're going to post it. Jay Hardcore going to be posting it. I'm going to be posting it if you um had plan to take time off see if you can rearrange it because i want to see all of y'all there man we're going to try to make it as uh best event as we can make it man and try to have some fun have some laughs have some smiles man and make some memories so man salute the tbp nation man y'all stay tuned raffles i mean raffles still in effect meet and greet still in effect november is still the date just a little further down stay tuned be at you in a minute in the meantime, y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, and by all means, ma, 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 bam, duck them hooks. Now, I know some of you probably say, I can duck them, but you can't duck them. You really can't. And you definitely can't duck all three of them, you dig? Peace. <laughs>